Ian, thank you for coming to North Devon. I love it here, mate. Look at it. And I've brought the sunshine. You have. We're in yeah. holiday mode. In holiday, mate. That's why I've brought well, the sweets in the fridge. Yeah. Let's move on. But yeah, so first, bro, you fished here before, obviously. I fished here the other year, Michael Poulter, in, in the cold weather on the island lake, which is, uh, he does a winter ticket, like a syndicate okay. ticket. Yeah. And we ended up, well, Michael had 10 fish, which is, whoa, well, out there, mate. But the brace of fire, the 46, Michael had a 46. Yeah. They're just, mate, look at it. It's beautiful. Oh, it's stunning. We didn't even yeah. walk around these when we come up here, because we constantly, every hour we had, we spent on there, but now we're having to go on yeah. these. But I mean, yeah, this lake itself, I think they go up to mid thirties in here. Well, that's Willow, isn't it? We've got Willow and Cops, yep. haven't we? We're going to have a look at Cops tomorrow and we're going to bivvy up on Willow, won't we? So, yeah, Tony said they're in here till 38. Yeah. 38 plus. It's just mad. We've had a wander down. There's fish jumping about everywhere. It's a beautiful fishery. It's clean. It's safe. You've got the showers, toilets. You've got the toilet right behind the car. Yeah. Mate, what isn't there to like, to be fair? No. Well, I think we've just got to literally get our gear out. Yeah, We're mate, going to try and catch them for the cameras, some really. complex tea about and uh, catch some cops. Yeah. Scaly critters. Scaly critters. Let's get set up and then we can come back at you. Get on it. Oh, I told you. I told you. I told you. You didn't film it, did you? Yes, he's got that on film. After unloading the kit, we headed around to a lightly looking swim. It was a double, which meant a social was definitely on the cards. Well, we'd had a lot of extreme heat at the start of the year and the mallet was needed as the ground was like granite. As with any new venue, we were real keen to get a couple of rods out first as we thought we might nip a quick bite. This gave us a chance to have rods in the water whilst then deciding what was going to be our best plan of attack moving forward. Well, first bite, just down the right hand side of the swim here. I noticed a couple of bubbles, pinged out a little pop up, bag of pellets and away we've gone. Another one to the garlic, absolutely love it. Especially at this time of year. And get in. <laughs> what a result. Made up with that. Absolutely made up with that one. There we are. First fish out of Willow, down at Firsbury Lake. 16 and a half pounds. As you can see, there's a few scrapes on him. It's just gone, they spawned a couple of weeks ago. So this is kind of what you'd expect now. But we'll get him treated, get him back, and hopefully we'll have plenty more to show you. But a very welcome fish indeed. Well, thank you, my friend. Hopefully, see your big sister soon. Swim choice, selection, whatever you want to call it. After a good walk around with Tony, he pointed out this, that and the other, because it, it's his lake, he lives here. Pointed out a few bits to us, and we've chose to go in plateau and social, which is a double peg, which gives us so many options, doesn't it? A, we get to bivvy up together and have a good chat, not Can't seen wait. each other for ages. But yeah, we can cover so much area of the lake and I think leaving the ends like you mentioned earlier, we can put a bit of bait in, go around, see if we can get stalking opportunities. Sit a bag of pellet you know? in, can't we? But, but we've got the bulk of the lake here, yet two sections of it. I've gone on the left in the social side of the swim. Dan has gone on the right in the plateau side. Of the... Where is the plateau? I haven't found it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going, yeah, it's be one looking for no, signs. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, well, I'll have a little. Uh, he said there's a few bars and bits like that, so we'll see what we've we'll got. Have a look, but... mate. We're, we're just about to address the rods uh, and we'll get back to you with what tactics <laughs> and what we're going to apply in a little bit. Till then, we're going to stick that kettle on, have a nice frothy coffee. Let's do it. Right. As far as Dan's concerned, I've popped to the van to get some leads. But while I'm there, kilo of this stuff. So we're not going to tell him. I'm going to bake this little corner. Ironically, it's where I sat on the fence earlier and broke a little sign. We're going to stick a little bit of bait in here, come back, and there's one jumping out. Come back in an hour's time, and we might be able to nick one out the edge. So, shh, don't tell Dan. Oh, 
one more, mate. Now, having uh, having done some work up there, should we say, I'm just getting a few bags of pellet ready in case I need them. <laughs> Hopefully, I will. I'll show you. Here we go. Hopefully, I only need one of these, but preparation is key. Look at that lot. Lovely little parcels, which can be lowered in the edge if a fish bothers to, to visit the edge. He still don't know. Brilliant. So, after a couple of um, rather adventurous yet failed casts to the lovely flag iris opposite, I have kindly got the assistance of Ian Russell's bait pole. So I'm gonna try and get a rig out there because that is where I've seen a couple of fish. So while I'm shipping out rather cautiously in this wind, Ian is behind me, lavering on the sections to try and make it. This isn't looking fantastic from where I'm sitting. I was doing so well. After a, a nice bit of early action, we got all six rods out in front of us, covering a lot of different options, and we were definitely hopeful for a few more fish. All right, let's have it. Nice and high, follow down, sploodoosh, nowhere near. Oh, not happy, not happy. Ian and myself had spent most of the day chasing fish, they are evidently close to the reeds, they were keeping real tight to the bank. We tried an array of tactics to try and get them out. Solid bags, bright singles, we just couldn't seem to nick a bite no matter what we tried. After what was hours of what felt like watching, it was time to have a bite to eat and then get the traps all set for the night. Right, so throughout the course of the day, the majority of the fish have been shown really tight toward the Norfolk Reed round. So, me and Alex decided to come round and have a bit of a prod around and just see what the margin's all about. I've been, I've been trying to get close to them today and I've got fairly tight, but I just wanted to come and have a bit of an investigation, see if there's anything different to the norm. Um, and under a few of these bushes, it sort of gets a bit deeper. And I'm just thinking, sort of a pressure day ticker like this, they don't probably often see many leads right in there so instead of clipping up and trying to drive it in tight i've got ian to cast over and i'm going to wash in line it from here to sort of keep my lines out of the water because i've seen a bit of fizzing just midway between the two islands and fishing this tight would completely cut that off and devoid my chances of open water fishing so i want to keep the lines completely out of the way allow me to still fish that area whilst presenting the bait tight over to this side so i'm going to try and get rigged up get a rod out there and hopefully can't play ball right so as the rules stipulate on this venue it is a freezer bait only so i fish aqua baits all their baits are frozen and i believe in the quality but i'm not going to go mad i just want a bit of a mouthful really and this stuff absolutely stinks i've got a mixture of hot shrimp and squid and hopefully that is going to be enough to nick me a bite. Right, so I've just put the washing line further up there. And Mr. Ian Russell has been very kind to help me. But on my way back round, I've noticed a couple of fish. So I'm not going to rush around there and tell him. This is technically my kind of half of the lake, maybe. Um, so I'm going to put a bit of bait in there first. And then tomorrow morning, if nothing's happened, I might get up here for a few hours. But I'm not going to tell Mr. Russell. You don't tell Mr. Russell. Mr. Cameraman don't tell Mr. Russell. 
and we'll try and stalk one out. So, just been round there and obviously set the washing line up. Now, tradition, I might have to put different sticks on tomorrow because I like my rods up really high for bird life. I'm just watching a few birds come through and thinking they'll probably take me out at two in the morning, so that'll be great. But the main thing to consider is you've got a fish obviously extremely tight, but don't come back in and start messing around too tight and pull it out the clip. And we want the bobbin right to the tight, right to the top. And as soon as you get a take, you'll get an extreme drop back. And obviously if it roars off, it'll pick up line, but I normally hit them as soon as they hit the deck. It's that sudden drop back, bang, wind down, connect, fish on. And hopefully that's what I'll be doing in a minute. That's a deep. Yeah, I know. Do you know what I thought? Because we've seen a lot, I really thought. I know you've had a fish, but I thought we'd. And I've had. A, well, I've had a rod. You have. I've yeah, had a rod nailed in the top of the head rod. on a solid bag rig. And um, we've seen quite a few, haven't we? They're real throughout the afternoon, they've been real tight in them reeds, which we have tried. Um, but now they're out in open water. That's a little bit better, mate. We've got. Well, I think you know the night, early morning, there's another one there, look, three or four yards off off the reeds. Yeah. So they're showing a lot more now, but it has been really hot. If there was anywhere else other than here, where there's a lot of fish, in all fairness, you wouldn't be expecting bites in the afternoon, mate. No, this, I, th I think we were both expecting, if we was gonna nick one, we was gonna nick odd fish, weren't we, at best, yeah. you know? We weren't gonna get them going. Um, like you say, they've been all around the edge, uh, and you have been working it. We've been pinging Ronnie, Ronnie's solid bags at them, trying to nick uh, something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they sort of seem to be coming more out into open water now, didn't they? Yeah. So you'd guess that anyway. But it's that type of venue, and they know you're here. I know, I know, it's got a, a, a good head of fish, but they also know you're here, mate. It's a little yeah. lake, isn't it? You know, I've, I've heard, I've heard one twice in this corner where I've got that left-hand rod bunged, and that sounded like a real good fish, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, real good. The rest fish, of them yeah. look like mid to upper doubles, to be fair, which is, um, they're good enough, buddy, aren't they? We can get a few bites. Oh, mate, yeah, you're like me. If you've got a bend in the rod, you're happy, aren't yeah, you? Know? Other than that rod. Yeah. Because it didn't actually bend it. didn't it, bend did it? nothing. Or it didn't bend anything at all. But no, it's a glorious place to spend the evening anyway, isn't it? And like yeah, you mate. say, I think it hasn't happened today, so tonight does look good with what we're seeing. One show over the back there. Yeah, there's a lot showing now. But what I've done is I've got probably two kilos of, of complex tea in that open section of water yeah. right in the middle and a couple of, a solid bag which did do a rud. I think, I think the rudder eating the pellet anyway, Dan, but you know, and the other one to Ronnie and I've got a Ronnie up in his corner with a 15 mil complex tea pop up on it. Yeah. Um, that's all I've done really. That's all you can do, isn't it? You know, I've chased him in the afternoon. Yeah. I've tried tight to the reeds opposite, tight to the reeds left. You've got to settle down at some stage, haven't you? Oh, yeah, and, and it's the thing, I've not put any bait out in front of me yet. Yeah. Nick that fish, bonus fish, sort of right place, right time, I think, as it was moving through. I might just give a couple of catapults of bait out there, just mm. one I've got something, like you say, because the rod are, are certainly picking up the smaller I think the boilie items. is the way, isn't it? Yeah, Definitely the boilie is the way. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll get the rod sorted, and then hopefully, well, yeah, see what happens. Fingers crossed we get one before we get in the bag, but... Well, do you know what? I'm betting they'll be in the night and early morning because they haven't been in the afternoon, have they? <laughs> so it's an even bet. Yeah. You think I think it's uh, wise I'd of me to place that. that bet? I'd give you that. I'm going to get on Bet Fred, mate, and put that in, mate. I'll tell you now. But yeah, we'll see what the night brings, mate. We? I'm very confident. Of this. There's quite a few showing now away from the reed beds. Yeah. You know, four or five, six yards off of them, which they haven't done all day, mate. So fingers crossed. Get a bite. See you in the morning. Good night. Just gone to bed, and the one on the side wall, the left one, is um, one I slung down in that corner where we'd, I'd heard a couple of good ones earlier. But the rolled has um, has lit up. I don't want to give up either. Oop! Got reed stuck through me fishing wheel now. I've seen it. it looks quite quite a good fish to be honest with. He's um. one of them, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I was joking. <coughs> Dan, did you think I was joking? Oh, no. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Isn't it, Alex? Yeah. And it's one of them, mate. And it looks like the big long one, Dan. 
Not the one you joked about earlier. Did you, did you just see that, Dan? I did. Yeah. Well, Alex, see it. I did. I did think that when it rolled a minute ago. I said it looks like a big white one. It's either a very, very pale one. It's a big fish. He just said he has been out once or something, did he? Stop it. What he wants to do is give up now. That's him. That's a big fish. <laughs> Keep that light on. That's him. No. There he's him. Look. That's him. <laughs> Hang on. That's a 30 pound fish. If that ain't 30 pounds, it's 29 pounds. That's a big fish. <laughs> we joked about this earlier. There's a ghosty in here. I'll have that. <laughs> what is that all about? <laughs> look, look at it. Look, and there he is. That is a big fish. That's a big fish, mate. That's a walloper. <laughs> Come over here a second. Oh, don't, mate. And there he is, look. look at this him. fish hasn't been caught. No, it's been caught, hasn't it? It's been caught. What did you say, Dan? It's Twice. It's a big long one. Yeah, it is, mate. Yeah, that's the big long one. Well, it ain't a little fat one, is it? Look at him. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> it's my big 20 low 30. That's the. <laughs> <laughs> that is random. There we are. Bottom lipped in the water. That is a big one. 32, four. <laughs> 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 oh my, what was your 16 pound? <laughs> yeah, you knew that was coming, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I can get rid of my one, can't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do not believe this. Yeah. Come on, baby, calm down. A couple of big ghosts, a little fat one and a big long one that should be 30 pounds. Well, it's not 30 pounds, it's 32 pounds. And we did joke because my knack of catching these ornamentals is becoming quite legendary. <laughs> like I said when I was playing it, the chug oil in Norfolk this year, when the Jay's Lake in France, a 35 pounder and a 32. Look at that. What an not everyone's choice, I've got to view that. But what a lovely fish. Willow Lakes, didn't expect a 30 pounder. Let's be right about it when me and Dan said about coming here. But, um, cause there's lots and lots of 20s. It's a great 20s lake. But look at that, 32.4, I could not. And I just nodded off and all oh, you two were still setting up, weren't you? Yeah. See the catch boys were chilling out. I was in there expecting. So I got a little bit of rest knowing I'd be doing battle with this massive beast within 30 minutes of going to bed. Now, if you believe that crock of whatever, you're better than me. 32.4, let's get him back, thank you. What a lovely carp. Right, can I go? Yeah. He's angry, mate, you know what I mean? You're gonna get a lot of this, but we'll try, Dan. Let's dip him out. Let's let him go. There you go, in your own time, darling. <laughs> that is bizarre, 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 bizarre. Complex T, eat your heart out. Good night, Casper. Well, Mr. Russell, what about last night? Oh, what about it, Dan? What about it, Danny? <laughs> Mate, what about it? I know I spoke about it with the fish and, and these guys would have seen that, but how random is that? Everywhere I go lately, mate, if there's a koi, yeah. 
it, it, it hooks itself on my rig. Um, well, Tony over there yesterday, where the boat is, he said, oh, there's two in here, big long, and never gets caught. And I said, well, I'll have that. So, for a joke. Yeah. Anyway, there you go, the rest of history now, isn't it? Half past 11. It's like. It's unbelievable. Mate, man. that is crazy, Dan. Absolutely. One fish. I can say, I was more oh, surprised. Nothing happened after that, I think. Like, you know? They were quite lively. Certainly, here, they were yeah. quite lively in the night, weren't they? But, um, yeah, nothing, mate. And, well, nothing more. It's actually. It's challenging, which I like, yeah. you know, and that makes it a good venue to visit. There's a lot of fish. They're probably off a little bit of form because they spawned last week. So let's get it right. But, um, mate, I'm amazed. Even the, the open water rods just the evening, I saw two or three nut out right above where I've put a, a, lot of, a, a good few uh, complex tea boilies. But um, I'll keep plugging away with that. But, yeah, well, I've moved them all now. You know what I'm, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, it, like, yeah. I'm like? I'm like the ruddy Billy Wiz first thing in the morning. All mine now are, are, are clips along the reed beds on the far side and down to the left here where I had the fish from. So, well, like, but look at this. That tells you, you know, we've got the only swim of the lake. That if I go up there to go stalking, I'm going to I'm going to sit in my pants because we've really got the only ship doesn't get any sun, does no. it? And that, that wind is cold. Well, wow, mate, that's an easterly and it is not kind. But um, the fishing. Mate, we're not 24 hours in yet, and we've had a 32 and a 16. Uh, and I've had, two rad. Their day came I've had two rud. Yeah, you have. What oh, is that yeah. all about? Brilliant. I've come off the solid bags now, because I'm pretty sure after 20 minutes, it's a boily venue. After 20 minutes, I think I was fishing just single little wafters, and the, these rud, you know, they're goers uh, that you would say, a matchman would say, they're six to eight inch fish. They're eating all the pellet, mate. Yeah. They're yeah. Two little drop bags. Rud. So, but we've got a day ahead of us yeah. now. Like we're not 24 hours in, like I said, Dan. And like you said, it's it's tricky fishing at the moment, but we're thinking we're always doing, and that's keeping it going. Keep working, isn't it? It. If you come here, you got to work yeah, at it. Yeah. You? you know, you don't get to cast that backwards with a yellow wanger on the banger uh, and catch a few fish, are you? You know, the, the two we've caught have been thought about, moved around, and we've had the bite. So I've already been down there um, by the van. Putting a tin of corn, not the pellet this time. What yeah. a pellet! I'm guessing that pellet would have lasted 20 minutes with these rud. Now we, but that's the point. That's the whole thing of feeling your way into the fishery. It's boilies. Oh yeah, of course. If yeah. there's nothing murking up, I'll give it a couple of hours. Then I'll put half a key of boilie there, mm. which the rud aren't going to eat. So, and that's why it's always having enough in the van, isn't it, to yeah. change your approach and yeah, 15 millers or, or 18s even yeah. to, to allow for it. Because if you didn't have them. Tony's got a tackle shop as well, so if you ever, if people do come here and need to change, yeah. it's the perfect place to yeah. get bits and bobs in it as well. So yeah, and he does uh, that tiny little bait company from Nottingham. What they call oh oh dynamite? <laughs> does dynamite baits there uh, in the shop? But yeah, you've got to come here prepped. I certainly wouldn't be bringing them and pellet again if I come back no, here. Yeah. Be, you know, twenties, fifteens, eighteens, whatever. Twenties might do as I've got some in the van. Actually, they might turn it round. For us. We'll wait and see. Yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll work it out today. And um, hopefully, at some stage today, we'll show you another slightly smaller carp for Dan and a bigger one for Ian. Catch you later. <laughs>
and then um, Hyperactive Ian plans to leave it there for a while, but things change. But I'm now going to sit back. I think now I'm going to try one more dry cast. Sit back, get the rig ready, and lob it over there to where Craig is, and hopefully get it dropping right in the edge. I'm going to stick a slightly bigger lead on, a nice little rig with a couple of pop-ups in the bag, which <coughs> explain holds the rig up when it enters. Look, it's quite sloppy over there, but the fish are showing there. So that'll hold the rig up. Two minutes later, pop, up come the pop-ups. They'll drift off, the seagulls will eat them, and my rig will just sink, allegedly, slowly and rest on the, uh, the lake bed. So let's get it in play. Firsbury really was beginning to test us now. The fish were visible and that was what was so annoying. It was just so frustrating. But after spawning, sometimes this does happen. Also, the sun was hot, the wind was cold, and we were proactive. We'd been casting time rigs from PVA bags, different hook baits, try, trying everything we could to nick a bite. But however, we decided one of us should stay spot and the other should do a lap, see what's happening, and guess who drew the short straw? Well, I've just come around to the swim I baited yesterday just to sort of check the spots. And there's a few fish right over the back where I didn't actually bait and they're sort of milling around, having a little puff of silt every now and then. And there was one right close in the edge. It was just sort of sitting under the surface and just sort of meandering through sort of the bush. So I ran around, got some bread, and then I thought I'd try and stalk it out. But at the moment, I can't see it. So I'm going to sit tight, see what comes back, and see if I can get an opportunity, because we all love a bit of bread. Well, as you probably imagine, in all that excitement, the fish has done me off. But there's a lot of movement around here and there's a lot of cloudy water, but there are a few ducks. So I don't know if it's where they've been getting in and out with their young. But while I've got the bait in points, I can't see no fish just off that marsh marigold there. I'm going to maybe try and just tip ever such a small bit of sort of pellet and maybe a few half boilies just for when they do come back, but I think I will give it at least 10 minutes before I do the off completely, just in case it does mosey back in, because right over the back, there's still a few mooching around on the top, but they, they, they might be a bit far for me to free line a bit of bread, but I'm hoping they might just push in again. So I don't know, I've got a few options. I can always put some bait in and come back again, but I'm gonna give it 10 minutes probably before I do anything yet, just to see what happens. There's a couple going into the reeds, a real light coloured one, and then a darker fish, and he's, I thought he was coming this way, but he's really swirling round. I don't think he knows what he wants, but it's that kind of behaviour, where sometimes just a bit of crust, it's that sort of smash and grab as soon as it's in their face. Was that on the bottom? Or was that where it kicked up? I think I snapped one too many twigs. Well, for me, it's the last chance saloon. I opted to get a bit of pellet and boilie and a bit to entice maybe the rud to feed and opening that would encourage the carp, really. I don't know, they seem like they're extremely cautious and they're more interested in basking and resting, I think, after spawning and actually getting their heads down. But I'll definitely keep an eye on it, and fingers crossed we can get something to happen. Right, those of you that know who I am or, or follow me at all will know how simple I like to keep things in my angling. So when I turn up here at Fursborough, we are on Willow Lake. Um, there's fish jumping everywhere and it's like, we're going to go in here and we're going to have a mashup. So what I have done, I had a quick lead around and most of the, the, the lake bed is quite soft but smooth. Perfect for me, perfect solid bag area. What I hadn't accounted for was it's quite a big head of rud. So I started on solid bags 
with little pellets and little wafters. And after two half a pound rud, I had to have a three thing. So then I went on to quite soft hook links, braided hook links, which were little mesh bags, small hooks again, with little pop-ups, literally just lifting the, let, the, the hook off the lake bed, rud. So, what I'm getting at is that when, you, when I visit all these different venues, obviously different scenarios come into play. You've got to try and read them as fast as you can because we're only, we're only, we've got a couple of days at our disposal to do what we're doing. So I've had to read this quite quick. I'll try to zig as well for a while. That hasn't paid off, but what has paid off and the same thing that pays off me everywhere I go and it's quite boring and I've got this on Instagram, not again, Russell's Ronnie rig, but if it works for me, and if it isn't broken, why are we gonna change it? So solid bag had to go, the zig had to go because it wasn't producing. Although zigs, I've never done a great deal of zigs. It's quite murky water here because there's a big head of fish in this, but a lot, lot of mid 20s in here uh, and stroke lower 30s. So that didn't work. The little mesh bags, as I've just said, with little wafters bought some rud and they were ravenous in here. So I've ended up being a boring angler again. My little power yellow pop-ups, Quite a long 23 pound Optimex fluorocarbon boon. Bear in mind, as I said a minute ago, it's got a, a firm, smooth lake bed, so bang. That's just gonna do that anyway. So it's gonna be presented wherever you go. And my boring size four, medium curve razor point, Ronnie rig with a little pop-up like I've said. So it isn't boring because it catches me a lot of fish wherever I go. The crux of this is don't sit on one rig, adjust what you're doing, try harder if you ain't getting them and put the Ronnie on. Sadly, with nothing happening in the stalking spots, it was time to get the rods back out in the main swim. I was keen to keep disturbance down to a minimum and get the rods out before the afternoon come to a close, just hoping that the fish might start moving around in the hours of darkness. A few pouches of bait were introduced over the top of some highly attractive pop-ups, but would this produce me another bonus fish? Time will tell. Well, I'm sitting here with Tony, the owner of the beautiful Furs Bray Lakes. And I fished the island lake, you know that. Yep. So I had a massive one out there, mate. Yeah. Did you photograph for me? 45, I believe. It was something like, no, actually it was 46. 46, all right. 46. I stand corrected. And you've done a walk around <laughs> with Alex on, on cops, but this, where we are is on, um, on willows, so yes. talk to me about what's in here, blah, blah, blah. Like, blah, really. blah. Yeah, so this Willow Lake was dug in 2011. Yep. Um, and we stocked it with a, about 140 fish. They were VS and Priories. Okay. Um, fairly small, the VS fish. They were about two and a half to four pound. Right. Um, and then we had some bigger Priories. And also we had a few fish that we moved over from yeah. the Iron Lake as well. That's sensible. Um, so yeah, that was obviously very early days. The lake was very bare back then because yeah. this was dug in a plain field. Look um, at it now, it's beautiful. So um, we, we had to work hard with this one to sort of uh, get it all planted yeah. and, and, and bring it up to scratch. Unlike the other lakes that already had established woodlands around yeah. them. Um, but uh, yeah, but obviously here we are now, sort of 14 years on, yeah. and um, and the what, fish have done really well. What sort of head of carp do, do you speculate you're in here now? Like, you know? excluding the self spawners, yes. I would say somewhere between 140 and 150. Well, and what's the acreage? Uh, just over two acres. Wow. Um, I would say at the present time, there's probably 10 to a dozen different 30 pounders. It's just amazing how they've, they've grown so. Yeah. Because it's a lot of fish, isn't it, for a two-acre pond? It is for a two-acre pond, yeah. It's a lot yeah. of carp, and yet the at 20s, I mean, I've seen loads jump here, and most of them look 25 pounders. Probably 50 to 60, 20 plus. So over, I would say half, uh, the, half the stock in here is um, is is 20 plus. Wow. And, and the ones behind that are all pretty yeah. much high doubles. Um, what else is in here? Uh, I know there's rud could have caught a couple. Yeah, yeah, there's quite, quite, quite a, a few, few rud. And they get quite um, big. There's a lot of perch in here as well, yeah. mainly small ones, but yeah. um, on the complex, this has probably got the biggest perch in it right, as okay. well. So if anybody fancied having a go for those, they'd certainly run to probably nearly three pounds in wow. here. Well, well, they'll fit up on the run as well, wouldn't but they? Yeah, exactly that. Thankfully. And I think they um, they get overlooked. <laughs> yeah, People don't fish for them. Um, but, uh, well, most yeah. of these carp uh, lakes, like your 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 um, complex here, they grow big perch, don't they? Because they get left alone. Yep. And they grow big on neglect anyway, don't yep. they? All fish do. And I think the carp fishery owners put them in 
to maintain a sort of balance yeah. with the carp, so they eat the fry yeah. and the eggs. Um, but yeah, as a spin-off from that, you end up with these carp waters with, with huge so perching. So now yeah. if I want to come here with my pals, because these ain't my pals, um, <laughs> how do we go about booking and, and fishing your lake? Yeah, so all the bookings now on this one are done through the Catch App. Okay. Um, and Willow is a lake exclusive venue. So wow. you book this one, minimum is 48 hours. Yep. Um, and then you can add on extra days. What's maximum anglers? Uh, four on here. So there's That's seven brilliant. swims. Well, with the lake exclusives, we do allow them to come with five. Yeah. General recommendation. They've all got to know each other, which yeah. is fed. No which, arguments. Yeah. Um, general, my recommendation is four. Brilliant. Four, four's you've ideal. You've got a fair bit. Uh, having fished it for a couple of days, you've got four of you, and it's quite a long little lake, isn't it? Yeah. You've got, you've all got your own water. With, with four of you, you can get spread out. Yeah. yeah. And nobody's interfering with anybody else's angling, which That's is, brilliant, is perfect, really. Well, yeah. it's, it's an amazing, beautiful, complex that I hope to return to again someday and blag a trip off you. More than so, welcome in. <laughs> on behalf of us, thank you very much, Tone. We're off early tomorrow morning, so we yep. may or may not see you. Hope we do. But um, thank you very much, mate. You're welcome. Cheers, Anytime. buddy. Well, Dan, unfortunately for us, unfortunately for our missus, yeah. <laughs> the trip has come to an end, mate. We've got another half an hour. But what a lovely, lovely couple of days fishing, mate. Oh, mate, it's a gorgeous complex. Tony's a top guy as well, isn't he? Like, he's always on hand to sort of put people in the right direction. And that oh, Look what he's created, yeah, Dan. It's, unbelievable. It's, it's heaven, really, and it? yeah. it's so nice, quiet. Although it would have been better if he'd have been able to stop this easterly wind. Yeah, it's been a bit chilly. So I'm surprised he ain't got a big wind break He's somewhere. not really Tony King. He's Tony King non, because yeah. if, if he'd be able to stop the wind. But we've had a lovely time, mate. A couple of nice fish. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. I'm happy with that. And again, yeah. I think it has, it has been tricky. It's as simple as that. You know, we've angled hard. But it's been one of them what you can really get your head into your fishing, can't you? Really yeah. enjoyed it, mate. I've seen some really good fish leaping about mm. and swirling around up in the shallow bit. So, yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, mate. It's been really, really nice. Yeah. Right. And I think anyone looking for a lake exclusive, literally jump on catch, check it out. Um, you will not be disappointed coming to here. Firsbury Lakes it is a mega place. Yeah. Thank you. Now I'm going to get on to the A303. Yeah, I'll pack down and, yeah, I'll race you out the gate. London bound. <laughs>